Hello, everyone. Welcome to Biogas World's France Month webinar discussing the opportunities and challenges of the French biogas market. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared with participants following the webinar. In addition, if you have any questions for our presenters, we invite you to write them in the Q&A box and we will ask our presenters following their presentations or in the Q&A at the end of the webinar. Biogas World hosts new country focus webinars each month to discuss the opportunities and challenges within various markets. Be sure to also join us on our biogas community website for the latest updates and to network with companies in the biogas and biomethane industries. I would like to thank our presenters for joining us today. Aurel Iron, Business Development and Marketing Director at Clark Energy, and Junius Perlus, Business Developer, Business Developer at Methalac. Our first presenter today is Junius Perlus. Junius is a business developer for a well-established French biogas actor, Methalac. Based in their first U.S. office and in charge of market analysis for biogas projects across North America. He has spent two years identifying opportunities in the renewable energy sector, building relationships with key stakeholders, and contributing to strategic decisions for market expansion. Junius, I will pass it over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. So, yeah, um, as Ryan said, I've been working with Metalac for two years now. Uh, I'll share my screen and give you my presentation. Metalac is a French biogas EPC. We've built uh, 65 digesters in 12 years, and we offer maintenance and uh, biological monitoring programs to over 100 um, anaerobic digesters throughout France. And, uh, and so, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll present the, the trends and opportunities of the French market. Uh, first, I'll uh, give a small presentation of the European biogas market. Um, before moving on to the key factors of the attractivity of the French biogas market. Then I'll follow with some numbers of the French biogas market before finishing off with the presentation of uh, Meta Vares, um, an anaerobic, anaerobic digester or company as um, commissioned in 2021 and which uh, pasteurized and depackaged um, food from supermarkets and uh, agro industries. All right, let's move on. So in Europe, um, the production of biogas in 2022 was 4.2 billion cubic meters. And the objective for 2030 is to uh, have 30 billion cubic meter produced. And that's why the European Union has created the Red 2 program and the Green, Green Deal to give um to make objectives and gives guide guidelines to uh, manage to these objectives and the uh so the main target is to have 100 percent of our renewable uh, biogas produ um, produced in uh in europe and to obtain 50 50 billion cubic meters by 2050 and we see now that france is the second producer of biogas after germany uh, now let's move on with the key factors of what makes uh, French attractive for biogas. So first of all, there's a lot of government support. Uh, new projects uh, in terms of uh, co-digest uh, uh, no, sorry. New new project uh, projects who have cogenerations engines can receive up to two hundred and fifty thousand euros of um, of incentives and new project to inject gas into the pipelines can receive 750,000 euros of, uh, of incentives. Uh, to receive those incentives, project must have some prerequisites. They must uh, have been pre-studied and must be also under the supervision of a Qualimeta labeled company. Qualimeta is a label that uh, proves that the companies are following certain steps um, and guidelines when they build their anaerobic digesters. Uh, Metalac has uh, had that um, uh, label since it, the day of its creation. Also, a project must be new project. It, it cannot be a revamping project. Otherwise, uh, you can't receive the incentives. And the owner of the project, which are usually are farmers in France, they must own 60% of the feedstock they uh, digest and they must they mustn't use any of their main crops as uh, as a feedstock for their digesters and finally 
the last uh, point is they need to make a 10% down, down payment on their project. They, they can't have only external uh, investment to build a project. And, and uh, in, if all those prerequisites are uh, obtained, then they can receive the incentives from the government. We also have feed-in rates, which fixes uh, the biogas price at which it's going to be purchased that are very um, very good for farmers to make uh, financial uh, analysis and predilections. And um, it, it, it has a less volatility in terms of uh, price range. We also have a big push between uh, for circular economy in France. The government is going to simplify the biogas, uh, the feedstock uh, digestion process if uh, feedstock are sourced locally into uh, from a, a, a short uh, perimeter. And finally, we can, we've seen on the first slide, there's a growing demand for green energy and that France is trying to emancipate itself from fossil fuel. So now uh, I can show you some numbers about the French biogas markets. Uh, as of 2024, there were sev almost 700 uh, biogas plants that inject uh, gas into the uh, pipeline. Uh, I'll let Aurel talk about the um, cogeneration project, but we also we need to acknowledge that there are 900 uh, plus projects with the cogeneration engines. And so in total in France, we have six, uh, 1,600 uh, anaerobic digesters. We can see that the market is very mature in the north of France and it's moving towards new projects are being built now mostly in southwest of France or in Bordeaux, Toulouse region. And yeah, the Mediterranean uh, part of France has never been um, highly targeted for biogas projects. In terms of the evolutions of the biogas market, um, so the feeding rates were established in 2018, 2019. And so that's why we've seen a large increase of new projects uh, at that time. And then COVID hit in 2020 and feeding rates were very, uh, very low. And it, it has put a hold into a uh, new project uh, being developed. But farmers were still uh, looking at making, uh, at building anaerobic digesters. And in June 2023, where the, when the new uh, feeding rates were established, we've seen that it has uh, pushed farmers now to build new uh, new projects. And we can see that 2023 is already uh, increasing. And the numbers for 2024 only includes the first quarter of 2024. So we're expecting uh, 2024 new projects to be higher than 2023. So that was for the French numbers of the biogas market. Now I'll introduce you to uh, Metavares, which is uh, leading the way to 100% waste conversion. And um, we'll see how they uh, co-digest multiple sources of, of feedstock. And I'll show you how most of the digesters are built in France. So first of all, we have the pasteurization process, which is a feeding uh, process. So Metavares, uh, receives um, unsold goods from supermarkets and um, also other other food waste from agro food industries in their in their neighbor uh, from their neighbors. And in France, if a feedstock is from animal an animal source, it has to be pasteurized for an hour at seventy degrees. So that that's what those tanks are for. Uh, they pasteurize all the, the organic waste after it's been depackaged from the plastic, aluminum, or glass, uh, thanks to this machine. And then it's going to be incorporated into the digester's tank. And then, uh, so Metavares also digest uh, agricultural residues, solid manure, and liquid manure. And that's what, the, so this uh, small pre-tank is used for liquid manure, uh, juice from silage, um, rain, uh, rain water, and that um, big uh, conveyor belt walking floor uh, is used for the um, solid content. So how it works is those tiles are going to push the um, organic uh, content to that big screw, which going to um, 
it's going to mix and push the um, organic waste into that uh, shredder, which is going to shred um, every party, uh, every uh, waste into thin particles and going to mix it to the liquid from the digester and going to send it, uh, send everything to the digester. And so we can see also how the tanks are, uh, are made. Usually we have one digester, one post digester and one um, storage tank uh, where the digested is going to be stored for winter being uh, before being land applied um, in the summer or at the beginning of spring. We have membranes. Uh, most of the heat in a biogas uh, plant is lost to, uh, through its um, member, uh, its uh, roof. So the membrane has to be isolated. There's a desulfurization net in the in the in the membrane inside the membrane, which in, injects the air, uh, oxygen. Sorry, and it's gonna crystallize the, um, the sulfur which is going to drop into the digestate and it's going it's going to make the digestate uh, uh, have a higher fertilizing potency and finally these are the last components of the digester tanks we have mixers uh, heating pipes uh, also we have a centralized pumping which is going to pump from digesters to post digesters to also prepeat tanks and it's going to send all the digested to the um, storage tank. And finally, also, Metallic uh, has its own automation system. Uh, you have to know that 90%, 98% of the malfunctions in an anaerobic digester can be fixed um, through the interface of, interface of our automation system, and it can be fixed in a few minutes. And yeah, that's uh, that's... That's for my presentation. I hope everyone uh, has a clear understanding of how the projects are built in France now. And I can uh, leave you with my contact notes uh, or services and uh, pass on to the next uh, presenter. Thanks for your presentation. Maybe a quick question or two before we move on. So for your... Uh, Metha Methaverse project that you were discussing. Yes. Uh, could you talk a bit about like what the percentage of manure to food waste is in the project, and uh, you know how long did it take approximately to develop and build the project? Um, so food waste is uh, less than ten percent of the overall feedstock. It is a uh, it's a small uh, small amount compared to the agricultural feedstock. And how long it took to build the project? A uh, project is usually built between two to a year and a half. Cool, thank you. And maybe one more quick one. So for a project developer, what are some challenges to consider when operating in the French biogas market? Um, I think there's a, for the moment, there's still some uh, conflict with some, um, local um, organizations and the population and the uh, and the friends is uh, looking towards sensibilizing sensibilizing the country and the population towards uh, uh, an anaerobic digestion projects because it can um, if yeah um, and also the projects are also small sometimes uh, the size of uh, of the project are, are usually pretty small in france Great, thank you. Thanks again for your presentation. Next, we have Aurel Iran. Aurel is the Business Development and Marketing Director for France and Francophone Africa. With a strong technical background as previous project engineer and engineering manager, he has been working in the energies field for more than 15 years, now leading Clark Energy's activities in new applications connected to energy transition. Aurel, I'll pass the floor over to you. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ryan. Um, very happy to be with you today. Uh, in fact, I'm uh, looking forward for the next uh, market and application uh, for Clark Energy. And today I will uh, discuss about the use of biogas uh, in French markets. So I will share my screen. 
So thank you. So in this uh, in this presentation, uh, which is uh, more or less the, the the continuation of the previous one from Junius, I, I will mostly focus on the use of biogas on the French market. And to do that, I will start with a brief introduction of uh, Clark Energy's activities. Uh, then I will uh, speak about the, the biogas uh, market in France uh, and the expectation for the for the next year, the different routes to market and the, the different uh, challenge to address. And I will end by uh, show you a case study on how to let you know how Clark Energy can, can help uh, to address those challenges. So first, uh, Clark Energy is an EPC and uh, service uh, company uh, which have been created uh, 35 years ago in the UK. The headquarters are, are located in uh, Liverpool. The purpose of the company is really to provide our customer with the best level of engineering, of project management and of services for their um, energy plant uh, projects. Uh, and we do that uh, thanks to our more than 1,400 employees worldwide, uh, as we are located in 27 different countries. In 2023, the turnover was almost 450 uh, uh, million euros. And we do have a very strong base of uh, 8 gigawatts of uh, installed plant with more than 1.5, 1.4 gigawatts uh, connected to renewable electricity. Now, if we move to the product uh, portfolio, uh, we see that we have definitely two core business, which are the gas engine and the biogas upgrading system. For the gas engine, Clark Energy acts as a distributor of uh, Yambarer gas engine. Uh, and uh, this type of technology uh, allow to use natural gas, biogas, but also special gases like uh, hydrogen uh, to produce electricity and potentially heat or, or, or coal on, on cogeneration or three generation application. Clark Energy also have a partnership with TPI for biogas upgrading, uh, where we use uh, three-stage membrane technology using avionic membrane to upgrade the biogas into biomethane. Besides these two main uh, applications, we also uh, target new markets, which are the CO2 carbon capture, the battery energy storage, uh, and the H2 uh, tanky solution, which can be both for production of use of uh, hydrogen. Now, if we look at uh, France, specifically French market, Clark Energy also have a quite a long uh, reference list, uh, which is composed of 14 sites of biomethane production for injection into the gas grid, from which Eight of them uh, are already equipped with CO2 recovery and liquefaction process uh, to produce food grade CO2. And a very large number of uh, sites, more than 500 sites, with gas engine and CHP using either natural gas or biogas. Uh, and in fact, uh, for a very long period, for more than 10 years, the, the best way to use biogas was definitely to produce uh, electricity uh, with reciprocating gas engine. And therefore, we have more than 100 sites equipped with gas engine using biogas from landfill, from uh, methanization, or also from a sewage plant. Um, this application uh, was supported with uh, an attractive feed-in tariff for electricity produced from uh, gas. And that's the reason why it has been largely used, as I mentioned, uh, until 2018, more or less, uh, as identified by Junius previously. Because then uh, the national policy for, for energy changed and it's uh, definitely focus on uh, biogas upgrading instead and biomethane. And that's the reason why for the, for the rest of this presentation, I was mainly focused for this application because 
this is uh, definitely the, the top one now in France. And as you can see in uh, on, the, on, on the next slide, uh, indeed, uh, since uh, 2018, there were a very fast growth of biomethane production in France, uh, which uh, reached now more than 650 uh, plants uh, at the end of 2023, and even more today, as, as mentioned previously. And it was driven definitely by this incentive for uh, biomethane feeding tariff. From this uh, 650 plants, in fact, uh, more than 80% of them are using, uh, are relying on agricultural waste or crops to feed the digester. And about the same ratio uh, are quite small installation, uh, assuming that their yearly capacity production is below 25 gigawatt hour per year, which is more or less uh, 250, 300 nm cube biogas. So quite a lot of a lot of plants, but quite small to medium dimension, let's say. And the the the, the majority of them use uh, free stage membrane technology to upgrade the biogas into biomethane. So today it's uh, it represents nine terawatt hours of biomethane production uh, in 2023, which weighed for more than three percent of the French uh, natural gas consumption. Uh, and once again, it is uh, really uh, driven by, by incentive, which historically uh, uh, feed in tariff, which have been uh, slightly changed uh, in the past few months. And now uh, they are different uh, routes to market uh, for, the, for the biomethane products. And it's what we're gonna see on this slide. So historically, once again, there were this feed-in tariff with a right to inject, meaning that almost uh, uh, every project um, can apply this, uh, this feed-in tariff uh, for the biomethane production plants. However, today, the situation is a bit different because only plants uh, below 25 gigawatt uh, hour per year of production can apply to this uh, feed-in tariff. So it's, it still exists, but it's only for the, the smallest uh, plant. For others, uh, there are still some uh, public incentive, but it is through a call for tender. Uh, we call it uh, Appel d'offre Programmation Pluriannuelle de l'énergie, or AOPPE. That means it is still a feed-in tariff, but with a premium, and it's based on an auction process. So there is definitely a competition between the different projects to reach the lowest possible price of biomethane. And basically, in 2024, there were three different sessions of this uh, auction process, with uh, each time circa um, 500 gigawatt hour for each. If you don't want to go through these two kinds of uh, applications, there, there are now a new option you can also consider. The first one is, is very new. It's has been started a few months ago. Are uh, the biomethane production certificate, we call it CPB in, in French. Uh, and it's a new law that obliged gas distributor to integrate in their portfolio a certain ratio of biomethane in the natural gas with a system of uh, guarantee of uh, origin. So it might boost in the coming year uh, also uh, the build of new plants uh, to reach the, the goal of the, of the CPB law. And then there is also uh, the possibility now to go direct from the producer to the end user and to tighten the biomethane purchase agreement. And here, things are open as it's private contract, so you, you can bargain whatever you want. But despite the, the, the very dynamic market I, I mentioned in the past, there are still a big uh, challenge and opportunity for biomethane in France, because again, the current situation in, is nine terawatt hour of production. But if we consider only the CPB, the goal of the CPB is to add 6.5 terawatt hour by 2028 of production. 
and that might help uh, France to reach the, 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 the target of the PPE. The target of the PPE is by 2028 being somewhere between 14 and 22 terawatt hour per year of production. And even uh, one of the last documents uh, from the, the, the government is the SFEC targeting by 2023 15 terawatt hours. So we can see uh, that there is still a potential of growth of uh, twofold to fivefold uh, for the biomethane production in the coming years. So the, the picture is uh, re really attractive. There are definitely good opportunity. Uh, still, uh, there are some uh, challenges to address. And for this challenge, uh, mostly I, I will talk about four of them. First one, maybe the most important, is to be able to increase uh, the size of installation to accelerate the growth of biomethane production. As I mentioned, a very large majority of plants so far are small to medium size. This objective from the government are really ambitious and to, to reach them, uh, we think it's very important uh, to increase the size of installation to, to meet this objective. That would help also, of course, to decrease the price of each NM cube of biomethane product. In the same idea, to improve uh, the, the CAPEX, uh, it is important to standardize technical solution and design, because so far, um, bio, biogas breeding plant sometimes was a bit uh, tailor-made or on-demand. Um, technology or, in, um, or engineer. And so we think it's important to standardize um, to improve the, the situation. Next point uh, is more about operation and maintenance. Uh, I think in, in the development phase, um, when we talk about uh, biogas or biomethane projects, we are mostly talking about engineering inst in installation, and it makes sense. Uh, but what we see from Clark Energy side is operation maintenance is really crucial phase uh, because there is, of course, a lot of uh, events, uh, area that can uh, dramatically impact uh, the availability and the downtime of the plant. And to avoid this, it's important uh, to rely on a strong organization for operation and maintenance to maximize profitability of the plants. And then last but not least, uh, there is also a big opportunity to address connected to CO2 recovery. Um, basically, a biomethane upgrading plant segregate CH4 and CO2, and CO2 are then to the atmosphere, but it can in fact be recovered uh, and uh, liquefied. Uh, so this is very interesting because it can help to improve the carbon footprint of an upgrading plant. And it can also diversify the revenue stream. So there is two main benefits to promote this uh, application. So as an example, um, to let you know how Clark Energy can help to address this challenge, I'd like to talk about the Sanamethan Biomethan Upgrading and CO2 Recovery Plant, which we are very proud of because it was one of the first uh, in France, including this uh, CO2 recovery system. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a plant uh, producing biogas from a cultural cultural waste with a free stage membrane. The biogas is uh, boosted before gas grid injection. And beside this, uh, you can see the, the, the two big uh, white tanks, which are the one for the liquefied carbon dioxide, which is also upgrade to, to food grade, so it can be used for several applications, uh, including uh, food and beverage. So these have been uh, delivered by Clark Energy as a turnkey solution. It's basically uh, what we can do to uh, help you to act in this uh, very attractive market of biomethane in France. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time and attention. If you have any question, I'll be happy to answer. And uh, with that, I uh, hand over to Ryan. 
Thank you for your presentation, Aurel. One question I'll grab from the chat here. So does the CPB have a floor price to guarantee minimum revenues? Does the CPB have a floor price? Uh, uh, no, there is, a, there is a maximum price, but I don't think there is a floor price. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure of that, but I can, um, I can check. Okay, thank you. And uh, one more. Um, could you discuss maybe the uh, opportunity of CO2 a bit more? Uh, so what is this opportunity look like for a biomethane facility? Yes, I think it's uh, an interesting point. So once again, the, 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 the global idea of a biomethane upgrading plant is to, to segregate uh, CH4 from, uh, from CO2 because in the biogas, more or less, they are 50-50 of each. Uh, the point is that this uh, CO2 usually is vent to atmosphere, so it has no value at all for the plant. Uh, whereas uh, from an environmental perspective, it would be good uh, to, uh, to recover. Um, and also, uh, it can be uh, uh, valuable when it's upgrade uh, to, to food grade. So the idea is to um, take the, the, the off gas, uh, compress uh, and cool down to liquefy them. And by this, uh, we, we concentrate the CO2 uh, up to more than 99.99%. Uh, and that's really an interesting thing to uh, diversify the, the revenue stream of the plant. Uh, so now more than a dozen uh, installations already use this technology in France. And we think that by going to more large scale uh, size of plants, it would make a uh, lot of sense because it can be used for beverage and um, and food uh, industry, as I mentioned, but as this CO2 is biogenic, it's also very interesting uh, for SAF or e-fuel. So we think in the coming years, there will be an increase of demand for this kind of CO2, which is uh, biogenic. Great, thank you. Now, before we move to the q and I will share uh, a few, uh, a recent showcase of projects in France that were featured in our recent showcase report. So the first one is Metha4 Agri, a project located in Isère, France, developed by Methalac. The project was commissioned in February of 2024 and injects nine gigawatt hours per year of biomethane into the local gas grid. So this is enough power to enough energy to power the four nearby towns. Sorry. This project features the collaboration of four farms, all within a four kilometer radius of one another. In addition, the project project is 100% local, involving design and construction com companies within a 35 kilometer radius. Methavaris was shared by uh, Junius in his presentation, so I'll just skip over this one. Congrier is a project located in Congrier, developed by Biogest and commissioned in February of 2023. The project produces 140 normal cubic meters per hour of biomethane from over 32,000 tons of cattle and horse manure. The project is supplied by nine farms within an average of five kilometers of the facility. Uh, Enterfreeze is another project developed by Biogest located in uh, Jans and commissioned in February of 2023. The project produces 400 normal cubic meters per hour of biomethane from 55 local cattle and chicken farms. Peters Mixers is a supplier of agitators and provides the mixers for three sites in Hope Vien and Idaire. The mixers were specially developed to be removable from the facility uh, without the need to empty the tanks. Clark Energy supplied the upgrading technology for the MD bi uh, biogas project located in Bar Sur Seine, Aube, commissioned in 2024. The project features technology to recycle 100% of outputted biogas, significantly reducing local emissions. The technology liquefies and captures 4,000 tons of biogenic CO2 per year. AB Energy provided the upgrading technology for the biomethane du Bandy project located in saint etienne royal Uis. The project began, produ began producing biomethane in 2023 
supplying 330 normal cubic meters per hour to the local gas grid. The project supplies fertilizer to farms in the community, promotes farm self-sufficiency and sustainable agricultural practices. Finally, we'd also like to share Biogas World's new interactive biomethane map presenting active biomethane sites around the world. Where it is available, the map shares information about the project, feedstocks utilized, biomethane production, greenhouse gas emission reductions, and images of the project. The map is beginning being continually updated to include new or updated projects and expanded to include new countries. So with that, thank you for your attention on the brief showcase of French biomethane projects, and we will now move to our Q&A. So I'll pull a question from the chat here for Aurel and Junius. Uh, how is biomethane injected into the gas grid counted towards national targets in France? And is all biomethane in France supported by, uh, is it all supported by various regimes? And can this biomethane be exported? Mm. Yep, uh, we have two, two, two regimes for the biogas pipelines, uh, GRDF and GRT, which were national and uh, have now been privatized. Um, uh, so it, it makes it easy. Uh, we only have to deal with one or two uh, uh, utilities. Uh, there are some uh, work being done for, uh, to uh, create a biogas purchase agreement to export or the biogas produced in France, but it is uh, in on, in process now. Um, for it, to my knowledge, there is not uh, there is no gas being uh, exported uh, as of now. Did you want to jump in on that too, RL? Uh, no, in fact, I can consider, I can confirm that uh, um, there are two different ways to, to inject the, the gas, uh, depending uh, there is a need of a booster or not. Uh, and I don't think either that uh, so far there were uh, possibilities to, uh, to use the, the guarantee of origin, basically, uh, to, uh, to export, because once it's... Uh, um, the, the, the gas is injected, uh, it's blended with, with natural gas, so that means it's mostly maybe through the guarantee of origin that would make sense to, to export through Europe, for instance. Great, thanks. Uh, a question uh, for both of you, maybe. Uh, how do you picture the evolution, evolution of biogas in France? Well, from, from, from my side, as I mentioned, I think the, the market is uh, going to stay uh, quite dynamic. Uh, we saw recently with the event in, in, in Russia that uh, uh, the natural gas can uh, price uh, can really change very fast. There is a need for, for local production, which is interesting for, for France. It can help also to, to meet the target of carbon reduction, of course. Uh, and so for those two reasons, I think the, the, the market is going to stay uh, dynamic and have the, the support of the national policy. Uh, it also helps for, for a lot of, uh, of time to bring an additional revenue to farmers, uh, basically. Uh, so it uh, also makes sense from a social perspective. Yes, and I agree, and I'll just say that uh, uh, France has four objectives to obtain uh, carbon neutrality by 2050. And yeah, for this reason, I think uh, biogas projects are will continue um, being developed. Thanks. And I have a question in the chat here for Aurel. Uh, have you considered coupling the CO2 with hydrogen production? Yes, we did. Uh, so far, uh, it is something a bit uh, theoretical, uh, mostly from uh, from a financial perspective, uh, because uh, indeed it can uh, be uh, used with uh, with hydrogen uh, to um, to make methanation. Um, so there are some, uh, let's say, proof proof to concept uh, which uh, have been considered. Uh, but so far, we, we don't have any reference, and we think that, uh, once again, from a financial perspective, uh, there is no need of 
uh, identify price for this uh, from this uh, methanation process. Otherwise, he, he makes not big advantage uh, to to produce this uh, this uh, gas. Thank you. And I have a question about uh, aggregating um, offtake aggregation. So, is aggregation an option in France? Um, yeah. Ag uh, aggregation. You mean uh, w working with aggregators for the for the production? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, it, it it can be an option. Uh, it can be an option, definitely. Sorry, and uh, for aggregation for uh, off-ditch contracts. Uh, for off-ditch contracts, uh, yes, it, it can be done also. Uh, in fact, uh, I didn't mention it, but uh, it's true that uh, the CO2 production from biomethane plant will remain small size, uh, somewhere between uh, between three thousand to ten thousand tons per year which is quite small uh, so it could be a big advantage uh, for different uh, sites to, to aggregate uh, and try to to deal with gas companies uh, with larger of a volume of uh, of uh, bio co2 thank you and uh, so both of you discussed some of the challenges but are there any opportunities that you're seeing in the market right now that can be shared Well, for the use, there is maybe one opportunity I didn't talk about, which is a kind of flexibility that can be brings by the biogas, because there is a need of flexibility on the electrical grid. And so we could imagine some plant uh, with a digester feeding either a biogas upgrading system or either a gas engine. Uh, and the two technology uh, together can bring a kind of flexibility, meaning uh, when there is a big need for electricity uh, with price uh, very high, uh, we can imagine uh, shutting down the biomethane production, uh, starting instead uh, the gas engine. Uh, and so it could bring a very large uh, flexibility if we apply this to a different uh, kind of site. And also be interesting also for the project developers or the owner of the plant because then it can uh, once again bring uh, additional revenues. Did you want to jump in on this also, Junius? Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to say no. The so the feeding prices and um, and the current um, targets for France makes uh, yeah makes investment uh, and uh, investment opportunities uh, strong in my opinion great thank you I'll pull one more from the chat here so uh, how will the issue of certification be addressed if exports are being considered? Mm, gas might not have to be integrated, uh, integrated into the pipeline. As we can see in the U.S., sometimes the, some of the digesters don't inject uh, gas into the utility pipeline. So that could be a solution. And they'd have... Uh, but to obtain carbon neutrality that will be another question because it means gas will gas will have to be in, uh, shipped through through roads or other um, means um, otherwise otherwise maybe use uh, carbon credits as uh, it is done in in the us as well mm. Thanks. And uh, Aurel, you mentioned in your presentation the uh, uses of CO2 for um, e-fuels. Now, what are the uh, opportunities, do you think, for e-fuels in France? Do you think this is uh, a market that will be pursued if it is uh, available? 
Well, it, it starts uh, basically, I think that uh, especially uh, the, um, the transport uh, and uh, especially um, uh, flight transportation are, are, are concerned with this uh, also ratio of uh, uh, renewable fuel which have to be had uh, in the plane. Uh, and therefore, the, there will be certainly a need in the coming years for the for the SAF and uh, e-fuel production, uh, because this kind of uh, plant will be huge uh, to reduce the cost, and so there will be a, a big need of CO2. Basically, the current national uh, consumption of CO2 in France is around 1 million uh, uh, tons per year, uh, and uh, it could be um uh, fold uh, 10 to fold 30 according to the to the expectation and driven basically by this need for uh, uh, biofuel production um, so we do think that it will be uh, a big driver in the coming years and that the the, the production of e-fuel uh, will have a very, very high value, so it can evaluate CO2, even though, of course, the price of biogenic CO2 from a uh, biomethane plant is higher from, uh, than the, the CO2 produced from uh, a steel methane reforming process, for instance. Uh, so it, it will make sense even from a financial perspective. Thank you. And it seems there's some interest as well now in uh, portfolio trading. So is there any opportunities for portfolio trading in France at this time? So for, for what, sorry? Uh, portfolio trading. Um, I believe uh, uh, credit trading. Um, yes, so, so you, you can do it for, uh, for the, for the CP, CPB, uh, basically for the CPB, uh, the natural gas distributor either have to produce their own uh, biogas with guarantee of origin and mix it into their offer, or either they can, um, they can buy it uh, from uh, another party. Uh, so that can be a, a solution even for investors to produce very big amount of, uh, of uh, biomethane and to trade uh, guarantee of origin with a natural gas distributor, for instance. Okay, and sorry, I, I was pulling it from the Q&A here and it seems I, I misinterpreted. So trading AD plants to be owned by investor funds was the question, sorry. Mm. Uh, most of the, the plants are usually owned by uh, farmers who manage their own feedstock um, and I, I believe then it like um, investment funds will need to negotiate uh, with the with the farmers directly uh, there are some projects that are being uh, developed through the help of uh, of investors uh, and as a but as I said um, as I said prior, the, if in order to receive uh, incentives from the department uh, for, for the organization towards um, uh, energy um, transition, the the project owner must ha must own sixty percent of its um, of the feedstock it it, uh, it produces to uh, or it's going to digest to receive incentives. So I think. Uh, France is uh, is making laws and regulations to in order to have uh, the farmers, uh, the owners of the project. Thank you. And you mentioned in your pre presentation, Junius, uh, some challenges with social acceptability. Now, maybe for for both presenters, is there um, maybe potential? Uh, uh, solutions or something that can be done to address this issue? Mm, now we see mo most of our customers, they they try sensibilizing. They have a uh, uh, port ouvert. Uh, so what they do is for a day or two for a weekend, they're going to open their uh, their door and let people uh, visit the units and try and explain them what are their objectives, what they're doing. 
because I think uh, most of the time it's uh, mo as usual it's misinformations or lack of communication towards um, anaerobic digestions and so people contest without exactly knowing uh, what what we're doing. Yes, I'm uh, in line with this. Uh, I think we should uh, explain uh, how does it works, why, uh, and how is it uh, secure. In fact, a large part of uh, the job of Clark Energy, for instance, uh, is to uh, set uh, risk analysis, ensure uh, everything within the plant will work uh, safely in good condition. Um, so I don't think we need to, to we do, we, we think to explain this, uh, and, um, and that will help definitely the, the acceptance of this kind of, uh, plants. Great. Thank you. Now, maybe, uh, well, we can wrap it up, uh, at the end of our time here. So are there any parting words that, uh, you would like to leave us with on the biomethane our biogas uh, market in France? Well, I, I think to conclude, we can definitely say that uh, biogas will remain a pillar of the energy transition in, in France. Uh, there are very nice uh, opportunities ahead. And uh, if you have any need uh, connected to this, uh, uh, do not hesitate to contact us. And I want to thank everybody for uh, being with us today. And yes, of course, don't hesitate to contact us. Great, thank you. That concludes our time today. As a reminder, the webinar recording will be shared with participants next week. If we were unable to get to your questions, we'll share them with our presenters and invite them to send a response to the question via Biogas Community. We invite everyone to join us on our Biogas Community platform to stay up to date with content from our France Biogas Market Focus Month and to participate in October's Focus Month on the Nordic Biogas Market. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to join us today and to thank our presenters, Aurel Heron with Clark Energy and Junius Perlus with Methalac. Thank you both. Thank you, good night. Bye.